Hi, this is Dave from Two Stroke Performance. Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to go through the process of measuring the squish clearance on a bike. Um, I'm using this 2017 KTM 300 XC as an example, but the process is exactly the same for any single cylinder dirt bike. So if, if you're working on a different bike, obviously some of the components are going to look slightly different, but the process is identical. So let's go ahead and do it. So the first step is to drain the coolant. So down on the water pump housing, find the drain bolt. Now that's pretty much done. There's still a little bit coming out, but as I said, we don't need to get every drop. Now always make a point of doing up the drain bolt tightly as soon as you put it back in. That way you can't forget it. The next thing we need to do is to remove the head stay. On this particular bike, on the new 2017 KTMs and Huskies, there's a, there's a head stay on either side of the head, so one on the left and one on, on the right. I'm going to go ahead and remove these now. On a lot of other bikes, there's a single head stay at the um, rear of the head, mounted to the back of the head, that goes straight up to the frame. Regardless of what's on your bike, um, it's the same thing, just re remove that bracket or that mount. So I'll go ahead and do that now. I'm using an impact gun, makes it a lot quicker. But, um, you guys can use whatever you have to at home. Now I don't really need to, but I'm going to take the spark plug out. You can leave it in. This one needs to come out anyway. This is still the original 7 heat range plug, which I'll be replacing with an 8 heat range, which is something I suggest for all the KTM 250s and 300s. And next, remove this top radiator hose. Just loosen off the clamp, no need to fully remove it. Pull the hose up. And if necessary, I often tighten the hose back up again, sorry, tighten the clamp back up again on the hose so you can't lose it. And just try and tuck the hose out of the way somewhere. Now for this KTM, I'm using a 13 millimeter socket to undo the head bolts. A lot of the Japanese bikes use 12 millimetre dome nuts. Some of the smaller bikes will use 10 millimetre and even down to 8 millimetre depending on the bike. Before we go any further, I'll these bolts into a truck. And now we can remove the head. I normally tuck the ignition lead up so it's out of the way. Now this head has come off very easily. Sometimes they're a little bit stuck in place so you may need to tap the back of it upwards with a rubber mallet, but this one's come straight off. Now this, um, this head has never been off before. This bike is pretty much brand new. Well, it's got about 50 hours, but it's totally stock. No one's ever had it apart. So that's the head there, stock 2017 KTM head. Um, the combustion chamber design is not fantastic on these. This particular bike is about to um, have this head set up. Um, that won't be part of this video, but um, that's the reason why I'm removing the head from this particular bike. Now the next thing we need to do is to remove the ignition cover. You have to do this on every bike when you're measuring the squish clearance uh, because we need to get to the flywheel um, in order to rotate the engine by hand at a later stage. Place it, if it comes off cleanly, 
Give me the bike so I can get the can of feed. Ready. So there's the gasket there. It's come off perfectly well. So obviously that now gives us access to the flywheel so we can rotate the engine by hand. So now just for those people that don't really understand why we're measuring the squish clearance, um, the process of measuring the squish clearance basically tells us how, uh, when the piston is at top dead centre, it tells us how much clearance there is between the top of the piston and, and the closest part of the combustion chamber, which is always the squish band around here. So it tells us how much clearance we've got to play with. Um, most bikes from the factory come with a clearance here that's just too big, and that leads to really inefficient combustion. And so when we machine up one of these heads, one, one of our aims, there's a few things we intend to do, but one of our aims is to tighten up this clearance uh, to, to give more efficient combustion it then results in better fuel economy, easier jetting, more power. You know, there's a, there's a whole list of, of benefits that it gives. So that's the reason why we're measuring the squish clearance. It's telling us the gap between the, the head here and the top of the piston. So I'll just go and grab some solder. Now there's two ways we can do this. The simplest way is to use some solder like this. This stuff is 2.4 millimetres thick. That's a common size with these products, 2.4 and 3.2 are fairly common sizes. So I'm going to start with a piece about that big. Pick it up off the ground. Bend it downwards like that, and then back out so that we end up with a small bend in the middle. You only want this bend to be about 10 or 15 millimetres high. So we end up with a piece like that and then holding the bend flat and I'm cutting the ends vertically. That's quite important. If you cut them horizontally, um, you often won't get a, a clear reading or a clear sort of squashed section at the end. So always hold the bend horizontal and cut vertically. I've just roughly cut that to what I think is about the, the width of the ball. That's pretty down close. You can then push and pull the bend in the middle to get the exact size. And you want to sit this piece of solder down in here so that it's fairly firmly touching the bore. I'll move the phone down. So it's a bit hard for me to see this camera angle. Maybe that's a, yeah, that's probably a little bit better. So that if I bring this, drop this piston away, the, the solder is actually going to support itself, it's going to stay there. So that's firmly sitting in the bore, it's sitting across the cylinder from left to right. Uh, that's really important. We don't want to measure front to back at this stage, we just want to measure left to right. Uh, that's very, very important. And before we put the head back on, we want to leave the piston, let's say maybe five millimetres below top dead centre. And remember the direction that you need to rotate the flywheel in order to bring the piston up because that's the direction that we're going to have to rotate it once the head is back on in order to crush the solder. So in this case I need to turn it clockwise to bring the, bring the piston up. So next thing is put the head back on. Some little locating jobs on this particular head. As are, as are on most of the podiums. Most bikes as well, Yamaha YZ250s have it, um, KDM 85s have it. Um, there's a few bikes out here that don't have locating dowels, such as a YZ125 or a CR500. Um, there's a few now, I'm actually only going to use four of the head bolts. You can use all of them, but for the purposes of measuring the squish clearance, as long as you've got left and right and at least two others, that's actually enough for now. It's a little shortcut. You don't have to do it at home. You can put all of the bolts back in if you want. But I know from experience that by doing, this head normally has six. I know from experience that by doing four of them, I'm gonna get a perfectly good reading. Okay, so, I'm gonna do these up in stages. They're not fully done up, but I'm just gonna go and uh, get a torque wrench now to finish them off. 
The spec on these head bolts is around about 28 newton metres. So I'll finish doing them up now. One at a time in a diagonal pattern. And now I'm going to use a T-bar. This one's a 17mm T-bar because that's a 17mm nut on the end here. Use whatever size you need to. And I'm going to rotate the engine, um, in this case, clockwise. That's purely because that's how I had it set up. And as I rotate it, as it comes up to top dead centre, it's going to get firm and then get loose again, which it just did. I'm going to bring it backwards and forwards past that point. The solder that I'm using is 2.4 millimetres thick, and I know from experience this squish clearance is going to be about 2 millimetres. So it's actually, bit, like it's only just pressing on the solder. So in this case, it was very easy to bring it past top dead centre. Some bikes where the squish is tighter, or if you're using a thicker solder, you will really have to sort of, like you'll really feel it, you know, suddenly sn almost snap past top dead centre. Um, once that's happened, take it backwards and forwards once or twice, just to make sure the solder is properly squashed. Yeah. Don't have a torque wrench at home, you can still successfully do this. Just use your common sense, these bolts don't need to be done up stupid. So put these bolts down. Pull the head off. It's come off cleanly. This time the O-rings have actually stuck to the head, that's fine. And I'll pull out the solder. Now, I'll hold this up. Hopefully you can see this solder was 2.4 and I know from experience this squish clearance measurement here is going to be around about 2, maybe 1.9 or so. So just the two ends of the solder have been squashed, not the centre here. Um, that's good. We don't want the centre bit to be squashed. If it is, then it means that you've made this loop too big and you should do it again with a smaller loop there. So if you are sending us a head to machine, do this twice send us two of these bits of solder. We will then use our equipment and measure the, the, the tighter spot, which is normally at the very, very tip here on both sides. Um, uh, one, sorry, one thing I should have mentioned before that you may have noticed is when I put this down on the piston, I put it down with the bend in the solder facing forwards. Always do that. If you do it that way, it means that when I get this in the workshop, I can tell which side is left and which side is right. Um, very occasionally we need to know left from right just to, just to um, you know, if there's any issues, you may have detonation issues or, or whatever, and we need to know what, uh, what side is what. So that's the process of measuring squish clearance. It's fairly straightforward. I've done it pretty slowly here. Um, honestly, you can do it in about five minutes at home with the right tools. If you don't have some of this nice thick solder, you can still achieve exactly the same thing with some thinner solder. Now, you can buy this stuff pretty much everywhere. This is 1.6 millimetres thick, which is a really common size. You can buy this, it's very, very cheap. You can buy this from any hardware store. The way to achieve what you want is cut a nice long length of it. So I'm cutting about, there we go, you can see that. It's about oh, 25 centimetres or so. Bend it in half, roughly. So it's in half like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna twist it together really, really tightly. So flatten this end and start twisting. The tighter the better, really. It takes a little bit of doing. But what we're getting here, as you'll see, is a nice tight coil. And because we started off with two bits that were 1.6 thick, what it means is that we're going to end up with a twist that's going to be close to 2.5 to 3 millimetres thick by the time it's all done very, very tightly, which will be enough. So there we go. So we've ended up with this piece here. I can now bend that into the same shape that I used before. I can cut the ends off vertically, same as before. And that's our test piece. Now, that's going to work perfectly well. If you're doing it this way, 
I'd probably suggest do three of them rather than two of them, just in case, you know, let's say if one of them isn't wound quite tightly enough, um, you know, it's best to do, do a few just to minimise the errors. Um, as I said, you can buy this solder really, really cheaply just about anywhere. It's, you know, not even $5 for a roll like this. So, yeah, I just wanted to add that bit to the video because uh, I know that will help a lot of people out. Okay, thanks for watching.